Now, when they found that ancient Greek uh, computer thing, mm -hmm. on, what, what is that called? The, the Antikythera anti mechanism. It has been determined that that analog computer was used to predict astronomical events. Beneath the turquoise waters of the Aegean Sea, a team of sponge divers made a discovery that would rewrite history. It was 1901, and off the Greek island of Antikythera, they stumbled upon the barnacle-covered remains of an ancient shipwreck. Among the statues, amphorae, and coins was something no one could explain, a corroded bronze box filled with intricate gears and dials. At first, it looked like nothing more than scrap metal. But when scientists began studying it, they realized this wasn't a relic of art or war. It was a machine, a machine that should not have existed. The device, later known as the Antikythera mechanism, was more than 2,000 years old, older than the Roman Empire, older than the birth of Christ. But here's where the mystery deepens. Only half of it survived. The rest vanished into the sea. For over a century, researchers tried to decode its fragmented gears and faded inscriptions. Then, in recent years, a team of engineers and scientists did the unthinkable. They rebuilt the missing half using advanced imaging, computer modeling, and ancient Greek math. What they uncovered shocked everyone because the restored mechanism doesn't just predict the heavens. It may have been designed to predict moments of power, persuasion, and influence when kings, orators, or empires could sway the human mind. Let's explore the shocking truth behind the world's first computer and what it might still be trying to tell us. The Antikythera wreck was found by accident. In the early 1900s, Greek sponge divers, seeking new grounds after a storm, came across the remnants of a sunken ship resting 150 feet below the surface. What they brought up stunned archaeologists. Bronze statues, luxury goods, marble fragments, and a calcified lump that looked like a piece of rock. That rock turned out to be the world's first known analog computer. When researchers from the National Archaeological Museum in Athens examined it, they noticed tiny teeth, gear teeth, embedded in the metal. Inscriptions on the surface mentioned celestial events. By 1902, archaeologist Valerio Stais suspected it was some kind of astronomical instrument. But his claim was dismissed. How could ancient Greeks, people who lived centuries before the invention of the clock, build a mechanical computer? Decades passed before anyone took it seriously again. Then came X-ray tomography in the 1970s and early 2000s. For the first time, scientists could look inside the corroded fragments without destroying them. What they saw was staggering. Dozens of interlocking gears, precisely cut, forming a machine capable of modeling the movements of the moon, sun, and planets. It was suddenly clear this wasn't mythology. This was ancient engineering genius, something so advanced it shouldn't have existed until the 1600s. And yet, even then, one question haunted everyone. Where's the rest of it? Of the original mechanism, only 82 fragments survived. These scraps make up less than half of what once existed. The dials on the back could calculate solar and lunar eclipses, but the front, the part that was missing, remained an enigma. Early reconstructions showed concentric rings and pointers that might have tracked planets, but the math didn't add up. The Greeks used epicycles to explain planetary motion, circles within circles, and this device seemed to have encoded those concepts physically through gears. In 2021, a research team from University College London claimed they had finally cracked it. Using inscriptions found inside the fragments, they reverse engineered what the front looked like. What they found was beyond belief. The missing half contained seven planetary dials, one for each known planet of the ancient world. Each dial used complex gearing to reproduce not just orbits, but retrograde motion. The strange backward loop planets appear to make in the sky. It was, in effect, 
a cosmic calculator, a mechanical universe. But deeper within the inscriptions, researchers found something more. Phrases referring not just to celestial events, but to periods of omen and influence. Certain planetary alignments, it suggested, were linked to moments of divine persuasion. In ancient Greece, such moments weren't seen as superstition. They were political timing tools. Speeches, wars, and coronations were often planned according to celestial signs. And this device, now fully reconstructed, could have been used to forecast when the heavens aligned with human emotion. A machine, in other words, that didn't just predict eclipses, but influence. To understand how shocking that is, we have to grasp what it means technologically. This machine, built around 150 to 100 BC, contained at least 37 bronze gears, each with precisely cut teeth less than a millimeter apart. It was housed in a wooden case about the size of a shoebox and operated by a hand crank. Turning the crank would set in motion a symphony of gears that rotated pointers on its face, showing the position of the moon, the sun, and planets against the zodiac. This was 2,000 years before the first known clock in Europe. Even more incredible, scientists have found differential gears inside, the same kind used in modern automobiles. That means the Greeks had mastered mechanical engineering concepts that wouldn't appear again until the 14th century. So who could have built it? Some credit Hipparchus, the father of trigonometry, whose astronomical data matches the mechanism's calculations. Others suggest Archimedes, whose genius in mechanics and mathematics fits perfectly. But whoever it was, this person or team, had technology that rivaled the Renaissance. And then, somehow, it vanished. No other device like it has ever been found from that era. It's as if the Antikythera mechanism was a spark of brilliance in the dark, a leap in knowledge that came too soon and disappeared before history could remember. For decades, engineers struggled to imagine what the missing half looked like. But by combining 3D scans, inscriptions, and astronomical algorithms, modern scientists have now built what they call the full Antikythera reconstruction. This new model reveals the front as a mechanical map of the cosmos, showing the movements of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn each tied to intricate gearing systems that mimic their real orbital periods. But it's what these movements represent that has stunned historians. Each planetary position wasn't just astronomy. It was astrology, encoded in metal. The mechanism could show when Venus and Jupiter aligned, moments the ancients believed brought peace or prosperity. It could mark Mars's approach to Saturn, signs of war or unrest, when researchers presented the full reconstruction, one historian called it the most complex object ever built in antiquity. Another said, it's like finding a jet engine in King Tut's tomb. The Antikythera mechanism is now recognized as the first mechanical model of the universe. By correlating planetary alignments with recorded historical events, such as the rise and fall of leaders, revolts, or mass gatherings, researchers found intriguing patterns. Was it coincidence or design? Some scholars argue the mechanism was a tool of divination, allowing ancient elites to forecast times of chaos or opportunity when they could shape public sentiment or assert control. If true, this would make the Antikythera not just the world's first computer, but the first machine of power. A device that merged science, religion, and politics into one system, and perhaps one secret. Only now, with the missing half restored, are we beginning to understand its full scope. It calculated influence. It measured belief. It mapped the connection between cosmos and control. A shattered relic from the deep, rebuilt with modern tools, has given us a glimpse into how advanced and how dangerous ancient knowledge could be. So what was the Antikythera mechanism, really? A calendar of the gods? A teaching tool? A weapon of persuasion? Maybe all three. 
In the rusted gears of that sunken bronze box lies a message that human civilization may have once reached a level of sophistication we can barely comprehend. A level where science, power, and faith weren't separate. They were synchronized. And now that the missing half has been rebuilt, the world must face a haunting question. If this was possible 2,000 years ago, what else have we forgotten?